Installation of a Max Torquerite Power Drawbar. Disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to show this installation for other people who are interested in installing a power drawbar. So the time when you install a power drawbar unit, it's for efficiency. We are doing it for safety. Machines are quite tall, and to put a wrench on, you need a step stool or a ladder, which can be quite dangerous. And also, students are leaving the wrenches attached to the bar and turning the machines on, which cause damage. And also, in some cases, the wrench slammed against the power unit, which contains high voltage electricity. Okay, we've ordered the, uh, a power draw bar from Torque Rate Industries um, in Tennessee. Uh, we got it through KBC up here in Canada, their uh, distributor. So in the box here we have a, um, uh, it comes with a draw bar. If you order it according to your machine, they'll send you the draw bar that fits your machine. Inside the box, it comes with a regulator, a uh, filter and lubricator. Uh, it comes with the, um, the draw bar unit itself. Uh, a little bit of uh, air tool oil, some grease. The hardware kit, which is all the hardware, and then we have the uh, pneumatic push button station. Plus, there's also uh, a length of hose to, to plumb it all together and the instructions. Okay, so we have the drawbar unit. And it mounts on top of the mill and it bolts into the, uh, the jack screws in the bearing plate. So uh, most mills have jack screws in the bearing plate and ours does. There's, uh, with the flange configuration, it fits almost every mill. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grease the drawbar. We're gonna apply some grease to the threads. We're also gonna uh, apply some grease um, to the bushing. Keep that lubricated. And we're going to drop the draw bar down inside the spindle. Please note the top shoulder of the draw bar must be 50 thou below the bearing plate for clearance. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the flange on the bearing plate and install the draw bar. That's installed. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the control station. I've already decided where I want mine to go. Uh, we're an educational facility, so I have to put it somewhere handy for the students to be able to reach. So I decided just above the, uh, the variable speed wheel. This way the plumbing is out of uh, harm's way. Okay, now we're going to install the regulator. I already had my airdrop installed last month when we had some work done in the shop.
putting a little spacer behind my button head screws so that uh, it clears if we ever have to move the ram that the, uh, the filter unit clears. Okay, so now we have to fill the oiler. So the supply line goes into the bottom and they're just, they come with uh, quick connectors. And according to the diagram, um, the uh, port on the left should be in. So I'll hook it up that way and then I'll test it. And the one on the right goes to the out. So I want them to look neat and tidy, so I'll cut them the same length so, so that they, they look uniform together. So they sent me about three extra feet, which is great. I simply just plug them in. That looks neat and tidy. So now we'll test it. We'll hook up the air supply. Okay, we'll turn on the ball valve to see. Test for leaks. It's recommended that you set it at about 90 psi. So what I'll do is let you pop the valve up. Turn it, I'll turn it to about 90 and set that and then test it. Let's say I want to remove the tool. I put my hand on the tool firmly, press the out button. <laughs> Nothing happens. Because the tool is down in the quill, is down. The drawbar is not engaged to the power drawbar unit, so we must lift this all the way up to the top and lock. Then we hold on with our hand and then we eject the tool. When we put the tool back in, we want to do it slowly, not full speed. Because if it goes full speed, it might pull up too quickly and you won't have a chance to align your keys. So we're going to put it in slowly. perfect every time. Now this is what's going to happen if the keys don't align. Closer. The taper is not in and this thing will be able to jiggle back and forth which will just give you a very very poor cut. So we don't ever want to do that. So out, in slowly and we're good to go. Now what we want to be careful of is to make sure that these keys line up. It's easy to do this by accident. So when we put the tool in, we want to go slow. We don't want to go full speed, just a little. Boom, and we're in. I'm glad that you enjoyed this video and a special shout out thanks to Andrew for helping me make the video. Don't forget, if you want to see more awesome videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Just click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Have a good night.